studying the work of director John Carpenter, some of the lessons we can learn as film fans and independent filmmakers are invaluable. Carpenter and producer Deborah Hill are trailblazers in their determination and skills as creatives. In this short essay, I want to look at the lessons this team of filmmakers learned from making their 1980 gothic horror mood-driven piece, The Fog. Director John Carpenter and producer Deborah Hill's follow-up to their 1978 independent hit Halloween was thematically a turn in a different direction for the young team of up-and-coming director and producer. In 1979, they began production on The Fog, a film Carpenter said, what we wanted to do in this movie, as opposed to the film we had made the year before Halloween, we wanted to make an old-fashioned ghost story. Carpenter and Hill were working smart and factored the success of Halloween into their new production model. The Fog shares many connections with Halloween. For example, the casting of an older star to get name credit on the film. Donald Pleasance from Halloween became classically trained actor and teacher and star John Houseman. And with the addition of horror queen Janet Lee from Psycho and popular star of small screen and movies Hal Holbrook, the film had an impressive cast of character actors and stars to add to its credits. The most important return was cinematographer Dean Cundy. Cundy's moody lighting and widescreen Panavision shooting, as it did in Halloween, adds an air of grace and scope to the fog. His work on the film is stunning. His beautiful backlighting gives the fog a haunting look and seems to bathe the whole film in spooky moonlight. A beautiful creative achievement. For me, the look and feel of the fog is what makes this movie long lasting. Its mood and atmosphere are spooky and could be considered quite gothic in its use of Edgar Allan Poe quotes, church locations and religious characters that share similarities with the Hammer Horror style of filmmaking, a style which Carpenter has shown appreciation for he returned to these gothic tropes in Prince of Darkness and Vampires. And of course, Carpenter showed his love for the classic horror and sci-fi genre with his reimaginings of The Thing and the unfairly treated Village of the Damned. Carpenter is a director with a wide backlog of cinematic education to influence his work, and The Fog combines his love of classic horror with literary influences from writers who offer a warning, don't be greedy, or the ghosts of the past will come and get you. The Fog is, after all, a moral-driven story. 11.55. Enough time for one more story. Analyzing the production of The Fog, one of the most important lessons is to know your audience and understand the market that you are working in. Carpenter said of the film, this was a movie we made once and then had to remake it because it didn't work. This shows a learning process at the time for the production's team. They were taking a critical look at their own work and realizing it didn't work. A lesson that needs to be learned by all independent filmmakers. Hill continued on the subject. We realized there were problems with the scares. We had to get a little gorier. I think at that time, David Cronenberg had just come out with scanners and he had taken the genre to a point where we had to go back and reassess some of the scares in the movie. This shows Hill's absolute skill and understanding of audience that can only come from being a well-researched and very creative producer. First of all, we have to make something which is scary anyway, which is fog, driving through fog and through rain, like, that's scary. But people don't associate it with ghosts or horror. And, and the fog became a character. We had to um, give it a color. Uh, we had to give it life, and that's what the glowing is. A valuable lesson we can all learn about how to succeed in an oversaturated film landscape is to have a great producer. Know your audience, ghouls and ghosts, and listen to your producer. It's the only way you can make it in the independent film market. After re-evaluation, much of the fog had to be reshot and reimagined. Carpenter talked about reshooting the Fog's opening with a very small crew. Himself and Hill both shooting second unit photography of ghostly happenings in small towns. 
In commentary, Carpenter said, Basically what you are seeing here is material we shot after the movie was completed to give the movie more mood and more fear. As I recall at the time, we were under a lot of pressure to deliver a film that was as frightening as Halloween. But Halloween was a very different kind of movie. From these words, you can imagine the sheer pressure and tremendous expectations of Carpenter and Hill from the studio. The independent film world is cutthroat, and if you are lucky enough to get funding after a successful film like Halloween, it must have felt as though the walls were closing in on the team after the realization the fog didn't work. Oh, great. Weird and unlucky. It is understandable that Carpenter may have been on the verge of thinking a failure at this point could derail his career. But the lesson we learn here from both Carpenter and Hill, we must never give up as creatives. The hard work they both put into this movie was most likely out of sheer desperation and the will to make it work. Keep me turned on for a while, and I'll try my best to do the same for you. Okay. All the added gore scenes and effect shots that were done in post to make the movie work were all shot in one month. This is again evidence of the team's hard work and understanding the cinematic technique. There was so much work to do before the film had to be delivered to the studio. This included shooting special effect shots that were done over weekends when studio equipment was available and mixing miniature work with multiple locations and reaction shots to create the stunning attack on the small fishing board at the beginning of the movie. Carpenter said on the additional shooting, you had to be more creative in those days. Watching this scene is marvelous in terms of production technique. Hill continued on the subject. Part of the problem going back and reshooting or doing additional shooting is matching everything. You have to keep the wardrobe and you have to redesign and it takes a lot of thinking and piecing together. Hill and Carpenter were an unbelievably powerful creative force in their relationship as director and producer. Looking at the fog and analyzing this small part of the film's production, what we can learn is you must never give up. As film students or creatives know, the hardest part of working is when you look at a piece you've agonized over and realize it just isn't working. You begin to doubt your talent and the fear of being a fraud sets in. Hill and Carpenter, through their partnership and expert knowledge of film technique, went back to the drawing board and bravely reimagined the scares in the fog. And most importantly, they did this to make sure they were hitting their target audience. Hill was smart, and her knowledge of the genre as a producer helped to make the fog become the tale of spooky horror with its gothic undercurrent that we all know and love today. This film has endured. Its look from Dean Cundy is beautiful and fits the eerie tone perfectly. And as always, John Carpenter's love of the genre and understanding of what it takes to make a great movie resulted in a classic of horror that continues to find new audiences on Blu-ray and 4K the same way I first saw it on VHS as a young film fan. Carpenter's legacy continues to build to this day because of his true talent as an independent filmmaker. Together, the team behind The Fog created a work that many consider a masterpiece of horror movie making. But it only came to be because of the understanding of the genre and the hardworking work of a producer that knew how to aim for the horror market. To be successful, you have to put in the work and have the talent. And Helen Carpenter had it in abundance. Together, they were truly a creative force to be reckoned with. The Fog to this day remains one of my favorite John Carpenter movies. Along with Prince of Darkness, its mood and atmosphere are incredible and relentless, and the film feels like an attack on the senses. So if you're a big John Carpenter fan and want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for listening.